Greg Guevara, how are you? I'm doing fine. Do you prefer J-Reg or Junior Egg? What I, do your friends call you? Uh, I don't have friends, and I really don't prefer any of those those online <laughs> handle names. Each one makes me more <laughs> disassociated than the other. No, I have a I have a real name. That name is Anthony. It's my real name. Um, really? No, I'm just kidding. No, no, that would be that would be yeah. ridiculous. It's uh, it's Greg. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you you why don't we why don't we go with uh, J Reg? Yeah, J Reg. J Reg. J -reg. J -reg. Right. It's uh, people people always uh, they tend to fall on J Reg or Dreg. Uh, I like Dreg mm -hmm. more personally, but if you if you if you call me J Reg, it'll keep me on edge a little bit. It'll It'll make me. It'll force me to engage. It'll be a little uncomfortable. Like, oh, it doesn't sound right. So, I don't yeah. know if I want you to be uncomfortable. I want to talk to you. I definitely don't want you disassociated either. Okay, I'll try to associate as much as possible during this conversation. <laughs> Do you actually disassociate? Um, no. It's all an act. It's all mm. a clever little act. Like, I don't know if I believe, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I guess I was pretty nervous to have you on, to be honest, because like, I didn't know who I was going to get. You, you have all of these personas and like, how do you even prepare for talking to someone like you? I just roll a dice. Whoosh. Pick, pick, pick one of the personas. <laughs> Number four. Okay. Um, I think I think I think you've got the right mentality, you know? You're fluid, you're flexible, just going with the flow, you know. Uh you got the you can tap into the conscientious aspect. You can you can you can go more for the fluid aspect. Yeah. Yeah. You're rolling the dice. It's like it's hard. I I kind of get it, right? What you're doing cuz like when I publish videos that are somewhat personal, it is hard. Like I just procrastinate on them for like sometimes months. And like mm. I have this one that I'm doing that I just might not ever publish. But like I think there's it, – it feels like it makes it easier to just to be a character. Not like downplaying your art because you, you make some amazing stuff. But like if there's a gap between me and the audience, it feels better. Well, there's always a gap between you and the audience, right? Um, it's, it's like a level of uh, how intentional do I want that gap to be? Mm. Is, unless you disagree, do you, think that, do you think that there can be no gap between you and your audience? Maybe, maybe, yeah. if, you, maybe if you're doing a live show and you're putting your hands on their face. <laughs> Which we can only hope that'll happen one day. One day. Um, come to my Minnesota sh show in June. I'm going to put my hands mm -hmm. on your face. Um, I'll, let's make it happen. Even when there's, so I'm, even I'm when kidding. you're, you're doing stand-up comedy or you're an actor or whatever, it's, you can't, I mean, even when I talk to my grandmother, like she's dead, but, um, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't seance? talk to, sorry, with the seance, even when her. I talk to my grandmother through a seance, yeah. I'm not going to act the same way as I would around my friends. Like, mm -hmm. are we, I mean, maybe I'm just slicing a part of myself and giving it to her. And then with my friends, it's another part of myself. I'm giving it to them. But right. I don't think anyone can really understand us besides ourselves, even then. Even then. Yeah. That's a, that, that, those are the kinds of thoughts that uh, get arisen with this parasociality stuff, for sure. Um, you know, you start thinking about code switching... Who am I around this person? Who am I around that person? You're, the audience is kind of like an entity that you act differently around, right? Um, and uh, some people are more honest with their online audiences than they are with people in their real life. That's interesting too, isn't it? It's like, can I be more myself with this faceless group of uh, infinite people that anyone could uh, hypothetically become a part of? The, rather than someone I should be you know, able to be, have great communication with, my, my good friend or my family member or whatever. Right. Very interesting. Very interesting. When I went to, this was years ago, but I went back to my friend's house in high school. I, I was at university at the time. 
and I noticed like in high school I was depressed and I I just had a just super depressed and like low like a lot of low status body positioning like I was you know more not taking up space and I noticed that when I went to her house I immediately took up that position again even though in university I had kind of grown away from that dropped it and there's something about especially old relationships where like they can hold they can their neural connections are patterned with these other right. people so like I get immediately back into the pattern with I think parents do that a lot yeah and thankfully don't but like I see a lot of people's parents do that so with parasocial it's only you there's no there's no one to like hold you as much yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Um, I mean, it makes me think of I have a friend who he's very domineering over me, and it doesn't matter how much my own self confidence builds over time. Like as soon as I'm around him, I go right back to being how I was when we first met in grade four, where he was hyper extroverted and I was more of an introvert. You know. Mm. I have to like let friends. I have a friend who I. Maybe not that strongly, but I was more of the like one who made decisions, and now it's like I have to remember to to let her make more decisions and stuff. Um, mm. Speaking on the other side of that, mm. yeah, letting people grow away, like especially if if we have like strong personalities, letting people like flourish under us, I think is important. I I say You're domineer, domineer and crush. <laughs> Mold yeah. them, mold them. Yeah, people are just Play-Doh in my hands. <laughs> that sounds like a good, healthy, sustainable way of interacting with the world. That's why I put my hands on people's faces during my live shows. It's to mold them. Yeah, absolutely. I have a few friends that I just go up and touch their face like that. It's a uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just immediately breaking. Um, that is funny though. I uh, it's your. Your audience is really interesting to me because I think they, you said, you didn't say dog whistle. You said the other word that's not um, associated with the all right, but you said like code, code switching. Um, mm. And it was interesting because like your, your art, like going back to this idea that we all, we only know ourselves. Like I think a lot of times of like, to explain my way of thinking, like I, Oftentimes, if I say, like, oh, Jerry seems kind of relaxed right now, like, that's my projection onto you. Like, I'm not going to say you're relaxed, right? But um, I think your audience projects a lot onto you. I think that's the mark of a good artist is people have different ideas and quite wildly different ideas of who you are. And they they seem to project a part of themselves onto you. Like, your interview with Lauren Southern was really interesting because I found you to be quite respectful towards her and like just friendly and nice. And then they, a lot of them were like, kind of thought you were owning her or something. And mm -hmm. I, I just didn't like, I just didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, good art. You can, well, the art, the art that I like, like is, is a uh, interpretive abstract stuff that you can, come into it and take different meanings from it. And some people have sort of stronger frameworks for how they need things to be. And so they leave the art with uh, a particular message in mind. Um, and I say, they're all right. All of them simultaneously. Whatever you project onto me is true because I'll adopt it and make it part of my identity. Because I actually don't believe that I know myself. I think that random people know me better than I know myself. So I'll just adopt my identity accordingly. Do you really think that? Oh yeah, I'm completely socially constructed. I'm like uh, I'm like I'm like the literally me character, Patrick Bateman, when he puts the when he puts the mask on and he says there's nothing under here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm that guy. <laughs> what happens when you're alone and you like meditate? I immediately put earphones in when I leave so I don't have to hear my own thoughts. <laughs> Drown those out. Destroy the ego. My whole life has been an effort to destroy my own ego. Make sure it just goes away. Socially constructed all the way, 100%. Hmm.
to answer that question sincerely, <laughs> um, meditating, <laughs> meditating is great. Meditating is great. Uh, but you know, med meditating is sort of just a way of like clearing my head of the noise, lots of noise in the world. Um, the question was like, who am I when I'm alone? Um, the answer is actually like a lot of the things that I project outwards as a sort of schizotypal bit is truly who I am inside. And, you know, who I truly am inside is shaped by how I project myself externally and, you know, what is responded to externally. And we all are like this. We're not, no one is like a completely self-made identity, makes their identity by themselves because identity is a bit of a, you know, you know, it's a bit of a conversation, a bit of a social construction. It's an ego. Ego is dopamine. Dopamine is, uh, you know, maybe if I was on more Adderall, then, then uh, I would know who I was. But right now, don't have enough. <laughs> Do you really do Adderall? No. <laughs> I'd go schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> so Adderall stimulates dopamine, and you yeah, can't yeah, be yeah. fucking around with the dopamine receptors while you're schizophrenic. Okay? No. It doesn't work. No. I did Adderall once or twice, and it was not, it just wasn't good. I didn't like it at all. I, I did modafinil once, and it was the best thing ever, and I decided that I could never do it again. <laughs> yeah. Many, many such yeah. cases. Yeah. But, uh, sure, yeah. you. Surely you, uh, you, you partake in some sort of stimulants. Stimulants are big, big no. right now. Coffee. No, oh, no, Nicotine. green tea, green tea, matcha. Oh yeah. Green matcha. tea. I'm, I'm a big, yeah. I'm a big green tea fan myself. Nice. Um, I just yeah. got off coffee. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I prefer Is that the your green stimulant of choice? Coffee. Uh, I like green tea yeah. the best. Yes. But I, I also like, uh, uh, nicotine, nicotine tends to, tends to do it for me as well. Nicotine gum, very small amounts, not enough to get addicted to it. Like a sixth of a gum, you know? Um, but that, that, that does it for me. Other than that, pretty, pretty basic stuff, you know, uh, snorting new pep, stuff like that. Just normal stuff. Yeah. Just normal. Yeah. I'm a normal guy. I've got a, I've got I a normal haircut. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got a normal, normal haircut. Just... I don't know if you noticed, but I'm, I'm normal now. So. Yeah, sorry, you talked to me yeah, about analysis. Yeah, you fixed all your mental continue. illnesses. Continue, continue. Yeah, no, it was just cool that you fixed all your mental illnesses. I was like, you know, just pretty it's cool that, that easy. I'm doing it as well. Yeah, if yeah. listen at home, if you have mental illness, just decide just not it. to have it anymore, and it goes away. All right, that's what worked for me, and uh, it'll work for you. Yeah. What, what are you complaining for? Just stop. Stop doing it. What do you mean? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your first instinct will be, oh, that's ridiculous. And then you're not going to try. You actually have to believe it in order for it to work. It's a lot like conversion therapy. Yeah, which also works and is healthy. I kind of believe that, like, not, not to that extent, obviously, in a satirical way, but I was talking to my friend who has, like, o not conversion therapy, I don't know, I'm, uh, <laughs> but... OCD. <laughs> like, yeah. He, he, he told us the other day that he has, yesterday actually, that he has OCD. And I was like, I mean, we had this conversation that revolved around like, you know, you can like get, you can like fix this. Like, and, and it's not even about fighting it. Like he was like, oh, I can fight my OCD. And I'm like, oh, that's just like a clash. You're just like fighting yourself. Like your OCD is actually, I mean, the way he described it, it seems like it was, something brought on from his childhood like he's super nervous all the time and he think he constantly thinks he's doing something wrong which his parents i think instilled into him with like this uh need need to walk on eggshells all the time and then it's like if you just and then he realized actually that he couldn't figure out whether people liked him or not that was that seemed to be one of the cruxes of his issue is like Mm. He's nervous all the time because he actually doesn't know whether people like him or and what to do in social social situations. So it was like, mm. but like, he had never even thought like I can fix this OCD. Like this is a this is a curable thing or like a mental illness is a spectrum and it's it's not just categorized into these specific boxes that you can never escape from. True. One sec. One sec. Real quick. Okay. One sec. <laughs> Green tea.
Sorry, I heard I heard some rapping. Um, rapping on a door. I thought it was my door. Well, oh, turns okay. Out, turns out it wasn't. Rapping at your chamber door. I thought yeah. you heard like hip hop music. <laughs> I was really excited at your door. Um, I wish. I wish I heard more hip hop yeah. music at my door. Sorry, you were. Uh, you, were, you, were on you heard that first here, everyone. Go to J Rig's uh, house and rap at his door. I'll, you know, I doxed myself hoping someone would just break into my home or something, but it never happened. So <laughs> I think these people who get doxed, they're really complaining about nothing here. Yeah. It's really about the psychological effect of being doxed. You know, no, one's, no one's actually going to do anything. Yeah. Don't worry about being doxed. Exactly. <laughs> Not a big deal. Can you move your mic a little closer? I think you were louder before. Oh, oh right, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. I <laughs> forgot. I I, was, I had to have a mic. I, f I forgot about yeah, the mic yeah. aspect of it. Um, sorry. So you were you were uh, we were so we were saying something, That's and then okay. my schizophrenia kicked in. Just kidding. I don't got nothing. What a what's it like I'm to have schizotypal? To 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 have schizotypal symptoms. Um, it's based and great and awesome. And, and cool and excellent and nice and it makes you special and quirky and, and awesome um schizotypal uh i don't have schizotypal i'm normal i'm a normal guy <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it a few times so i thought you wanted to talk about it uh, it's more of just a verbal tick at this point. Something I'm trying to ex excise from my vocabulary. It, it's not schizophrenic or schizotypal to identify as schizophrenic or schizotypal. That's actually autistic. Ah, uh, so what you want to do is be as normal as possible to actually be schizophrenic. So that's what I'm doing. Because a schizophrenic has no ego. They're, uh, they're too busy jumping in between egos. They're like they're like a toe deep into a million different egos. Um, meanwhile, an autistic person is really enraptured into one ego. Um, and so, if you start identifying as schizophrenic or schizotypal, then uh, it's pretty cringe. Uh, pretty schizophrenic. It's pretty not unschizophrenic, in my opinion. Uh, in my opinion. I'm interested Just in that because, like. I don't even know what an ego is. How, how oh, I do, do you? How do you have? I, I, I'll, I'll explain. Yeah. Um, so an ego. Okay. Is a, a, a framework made of dopamine in your brain that is you. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> no further explanation needed. I think I think that that covered it. Maybe my my interpretation of that might be like what I react to in my right. life. Right. Okay, interesting. So your ego is what you what you react to in your life. So um like things that evoke reaction from you is uh like the the reaction is the ego. Maybe um because if I think about getting rid of ego, which I also have no idea what people are saying when they when they say that. Um <laughs> uh, I have no fucking idea. Um, it seems to mean something like getting, like pairing back reactions, like mm -hmm. meditating a lot and then letting things pass by seems yeah. to be something like getting rid of the ego. So, Right, right. That's, that's an interesting way you conceptualized it. Because, um, you know, you can also can sort, of, course, sort of conceptualize ego along a spectrum where the Buddhist monk meditating to, you know, have an empty mind. That's, that's one way of looking at having zero ego. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you go like a hundred, and you're these one of these um, heavily ego centric people online are good examples of this, where their egos are so large, it's like larger than life. The the their opinion of themselves is so high, and they're so ego driven and stuff like that. Uh, Andrew Tate, Donald Trump, these are good examples of this. Their ego is so high, so you could kind of conceptualize like the Buddhist man meditating and the and the hyper capitalist. Uh, you know, entrepreneur on opposite ends of a spectrum. But you can also go off compass, okay? You go to negative 100 ego. 
So we're, we're zero. This is a meditating guy. Here's Andrew Tate slash Donald Trump. And then over here is active destruction of your own ego. So it's not just enough to think nothing. You need to think the opposite of what you think. How do you do that? I don't know. I'll let you know when I figure it out. But then I will think myself out of telling you. <laughs> well, that just, like, think the opposite of what I think just sounds like my friend, when he, when he has an OCD symptom, he goes, um, what, what I think he does is he says, oh, um, this person is making a slight against me when they aren't in reality, but yeah. And then he gets anxious and then he probably beats himself up for being anxious. And then mm -hmm. there's like all these layers on top, which are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OCD is, OCD is really tough. A lot of people associate OCD with just like, oh, you wash your hands too much. No, the obsessive thought loop stuff, very, very, uh, <laughs> severe mental illness. Um, and uh, a lot of people have, you know, you can have like OCD of it all, all kinds of different topics, some of which can be very disturbing for the person having them. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel a lot for your friend. That's uh, that does sound very rough. Those layers of uh, of thought loops. Well, I just thought that was the opposite of of the ego thing. Like when you say when you talked about Andrew Tate and Donald Trump, mm -hmm. they're engulfed in their own ego, but they're they're the ones who are also like highly narcissistic. Like I also think that those guys online who who post about being kissless, hugless virgins and like. I'm never going to get a girlfriend and I don't know how to talk to women and like, you know, I can't work out or whatever. I mean, that's just one example, but like this chronically online thing also seems to be some sort of obsession with the ego as well. Yeah. Well, what is, because uh, the internet stimulates dopamine and uh, the ego is made of dopamine. So it all makes sense. It all, it all lines up with my theory of everything. It's all coming together, folks. Um, yeah, no, I think like you're right. You're, yeah. Yes, it is. Y yeah, I think I think that's a astute observation. Because um, it's it's me, 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 I, 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 and so we suffer, right? Me, 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 I, 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 I me, 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 go, ego. You know, like uh, it doesn't matter if you like. You can think about yourself in a positive way, and narcissistically, and be ego obsessed. But depression is also a kind of ego obsession. I was on this retreat at an alpaca farm, and it was like a meditation type of retreat. Um, it's it's a it's a whole thing, but I we were like walking around thinking about these sorts of things and then I looked at an alpaca and I was worried about my life and then I looked at this alpaca just this <laughs> blank eyed animal like staring at us and I was like oh that alpaca if they knew what I was thinking would think that I was a fucking idiot for worrying about <laughs> all this like life nonsense and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then everything dropped away and yeah. I think that was some sort of like less of an ego experience because um, I think people can get trapped in the past a lot with their preconceived notions of how the future will be or how they are right now. Like you can actually just choose not to react to this environment in the, in the same way you do. And then suddenly you're, you're not a kissless, hugless virgin anymore. Like those things aren't attached to you anymore and you can yeah. just be in the present. Yeah. I mean the, the kissless, hugless virgin stuff is a label. You affix the label to your identity. It defines you, defines the messiness of your mind, draws a little box around it. And then some people, some people get more attached to the box. They'd rather get more attached to a limiting label than to allow themselves to be something else. All very true. You know, I was a camp counselor once and a kid walked up to me crying. And I said, uh, look at the trees. Look at the trees. I wasn't a very good count counselor. The trees don't care about your problems. Uh, Cause I didn't really, I didn't really care. Um, and anyway, yeah. that's, that's the, that's the story. Look at the trees. Cause they don't care. The trees don't care. The, I think, I think she was like five and she, 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 she looked at me like, you're full of shit. 
you're clearly a terrible <laughs> camp counselor. <laughs> I was like, wow, you're five and, and you're seeing right through me here. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it was the right message just delivered a little bit. She wasn't ready for it. She wasn't ready for your style of camp counseling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. You in nature a lot? I mean, you're in a pretty beautiful part of the world. Where am I? You're in Quebec, aren't you? I'm in Vancouver right now. Um, oh, okay, cool. Which also, is, which is, fucking beautiful. Which is a beautiful part of the world. Um, normally, I'm in Ottawa, which is a disgusting, filthy part of the world, okay? Uh, I'm just yeah, I'm, oh. I'm sorry. I mean, it's normal. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. I've got neutral opinions towards everything. I forgot. I forgot. Um... No, Vancouver's nice. I go, I go for walks. Weather's quite nice. The fires will begin soon. The, the, the sky will be clouded in ash and darkness. And I will inhale and think, eh, it's probably going to be fine next year. Because I'm a centrist. And that's, how I, that's how centrists think about things. You're a centrist now. Oh, yeah. I'm normal. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm normal. I've renounced all mental illness and political extremism. I'm, I'm completely normal. Cool, cool. I always thought you were kind of center left. I mean, your audience seems to be a little bit more to the left. Um, that's because of uh, careful curation patterns. There's different areas of different audience members, you know? It, it depends who you ask. You can, you can find what you want to look, when you, what you want to see. If you look in the Discord, you see a different thing than the Reddit, than the, than the Facebook group. They're all segmented, and I like it that way because it allows for a certain level of flexibility. Um, but now everyone's a centrist, and that's how it should be. Mm, good. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I was looking at the YouTube comments, um, and it just seemed like they swayed pretty left. Well, you know, um, which, which YouTube comments? Oh, the ones with Lauren Southern? Where they were all like, you dunked on Lauren oh, Southern. I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you dunked on her. You dunked on her, bro. I just thought it was a cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you get an interview with her in the same place? I mean, did you just reach out to her? Um, she actually, she reached out to me. Um, and she nice. said, I like, I like to center side. And I said, I responded back immediately and said, prepare to get dunked on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Rick you know, owns a white woman. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, and then I owned her. <laughs> that's that's how human interaction works. Yeah. <laughs> if you live on the internet enough to, to fry your dopamine receptors into perceiving every interaction with human beings as a power game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all at different levels. Like, yeah. Um, I used to Nothing watch a lot wrong of Jordan with myopic Peterson. power games. Oh yeah, you used, okay? Yeah, you're you're a Peterson head. P total Peterson head, absolutely. Yeah. Even now, I support mm -hmm. every tweet he's ever made. Me too, <laughs> me too. I have a I have a skit coming up. It's what I would do with the time machine, and they're like, "Are you gonna kill Pol Pot?" And the other guy's like, "You can just kill uh, Hitler." And then they're like, "Both." I'm like, "No, I've got more important things to do." And I go back in time. I'm like, Mr. Peterson, no, don't open Twitter. Don't do it. It's like, <laughs> you've done the world a great service. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, I've talked about this on other podcasts, but like Peterson, um, I think to use Petersonian terms, um, He's got, he's done some pretty great things in terms of like, the, I mean, people reduce him to clean your room, which is, I mean, just not, I don't think it's properly listening to him. But like, on the other hand, he's got this massive shadow of like, like clean your room and take care of your family and help out your community. And also the, the bloody postmodern neo-Marxists are everything wrong with the world and you should, they're your enemies. Like, mm -hmm. like there are these two really disparate things here and it's like. If you actually want to bring people together and like, I don't think, I don't think fighting and insulting people is the best way to go. Hmm. 
I'm 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 sort of the other way around. I like uh, his politics, but his self help stuff I don't like. So yeah, um, I'm really into how he uh, he kind of psychotically posts about trans people, but uh, <laughs> I uh, I really don't like how he tells me to clean my room. My room is a mess. I'm just there for the anti trans stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. I saw that um that video you did with that trans maxing person, and that was um. I just never even knew that existed. That was really a, a look into another world. I think I think the um, the trans discourse is really a broader transhumanist discourse, and people are going to slowly start waking up to that, which is an anti-validity sort of far left cultural perspective, which is that, uh, no, it's not actually about I was born in the wrong body. It's actually the fact that if I want to turn my skin purple and graft a unicorn horn to my head and identify as unicorn gender, then I can and I will. That's actually what it's about. It's a post-human, transhuman singularity. Um, but the world's not ready for that take yet. So I'm, I'm keeping, that one, keeping that one in the back of my head. But the transmaxing stuff's a good example of that. I think that's a good... I think that's pretty good, actually. Like, it, it does appeal to the right as well when you say that. Like, this is about personal freedom. Let me do whatever. Well, I want. yeah, that, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the transmaxers uh, that I talked to, and I'm doing, I'm going to do a documentary about the transmaxers one day. Uh, I've interviewed a few of them, and they're very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's it really seems to me to be a personal freedom thing. Of I want like. You know, whether or not I have what you describe as dysphoria, I'm going to be a woman and we're going to see what happens, you know, and it's like I'm like I'm just going to do it because uh, and that's interesting. It's an interesting perspective. It's a heterodox opinion, you could say, um, and that I'm always attracted to those. Can you describe what transmaxing is? Yeah, so transmaxing is the idea. It's a, an incel philosophy where if you're not getting broads as a man, then it's better to be the broad, become the broad. Um, and it makes, it ma that makes enough sense if you're ego possessed enough. Uh, and uh, these people are, so. Yeah, I mean, I think that people often find a lot of um, acceptance and friendship when they join those communities. Mm-hmm. Is, th is that what they described? Like, have they described good, positive outcomes from transmaxing? Yes. The transmaxers that I talked to were um, obviously evangelists for transmaxing. Does that mean it's going to work for everybody? No, it just means the two people I talked to were evangelists for transmaxing. Um, yeah. Well, but just to lots be safe, of, lots of case everyone who's watching this video should transmax, and then we can like have a, a broad study of what happens when you do it. I think it's probably yeah. the best idea for everyone. Yeah, not, not just incels, everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, do oh, it. Your dog. Yeah. <laughs> Go! You're, yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, women can do it too. Women become men. Men become women. Mm. <sighs> no, society. Oh... It's going to be destroyed. Oh, no. I, I would be really upset if society was destroyed. That would be terrible. That would be terrible. I don't just adopt whatever political philosophy allows me to destroy society the quickest. I have values. Mm, I have values. <laughs> Sorry. I'm... Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in the zone. Nice. Why do you think people want to destroy society? Boredom. Mm. Uh, but also, um, I think it has to do with because uh, um, uh, destroying society is like uh, is actually how you build society. You can't, you know what they say, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Ever think about that? <laughs> yep, all right. You can't make a society without storming a few capitals. <laughs> Precisely. You know, <clears throat> even if you're a pro, uh, if, even if you're pro-democracy, you're, um, you're pro, you know, 
um, you know, you're anti a sort of tyrannical insurrection or whatever, installing a fascist dictator in in your in instead of a, a democratically elected um, electoral body. Even if you're against that, you, uh, it's still good to have insurrections. Uh, but, but, Why? But, uh, but, yeah, ask me that question in ten minutes. I'll I'll, I'll think of some, <laughs> some some something good to justify my pathology towards destroying the world. I just want to, you know. Sometimes sometimes you don't need a reason. Sometimes uh, it's just kind of a, you know, why do why do why do I got to eat food? Why do I got to destroy society? So many questions. So many questions. Well, we're gonna spend all day thinking instead of destroying society. <laughs> Boring. Be a man of action. <laughs> Too much thinking, all right? Not enough, not enough doers, in my opinion. We could, use, we could use a few more doers. No more mental masturbation, okay? Mm, do. How about, how, about, how about get out of your room, go into the streets, put on a QAnon hat, storm the Capitol, uh, get shot by a police officer. Yeah, yeah whatever. Earlier on, you were talking about how you have different communities in, like, Discord, YouTube, Facebook. Do you have, I mean, do you have, like, super hardcore right-leaning community? I mean, I don't know how hardcore they would be. I mean, some people actually seem to take you pretty seriously. So I imagine that you have some fucking crazy, like, people in your communities as well. But is it me? very politically, do you have both extremes? I, me have crazy people in my community. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm normal. Uh, I'm no. normal. So like whenever I see that kind of stuff, I say, hey, guys, knock it off. You're not welcome here. You're being weird. Be socially acceptable. I actually started banning people from my subreddit who uh, were weird. And uh, so now they're just a bunch of normal people posting their normal W's. Cool. Cool. We call them V's because <laughs> we're too centrist to make the full W. It's like a half good idea. Double. I don't know why we don't, don't call them U's. Mm. It's a better post in your V's. <laughs> yeah, post in yeah. Your V's. No, V's is a different thing. You can't post V's. Um, it, just, it just made me think of this thing that's totally unrelated, but um, about... It's popped up in my mind a few times, and I figure if it pops up like three or four times, I should probably just say it. Um, mm. I'm, I'm, I've, I've noticed this upswing in, in internet extremism, and mm. especially racism, uh, that I, mm. and I noticed, this is a pretty, I don't know, whatever, it's fine. Um, but I noticed, did you, did you ever go on that website, or did you ever see that website Stormfront? Like, or it oh was yeah, a, a I, I, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. We're cool. very, very familiar with Stormfront. Cool. <laughs> nice. Okay, I have this theory that I have, it has no basis in reality. But I think mm -hmm. when Stormfront shut down, I think everyone migrated over to 4chan. And then 4chan became super racist. Like, I, mm. I think they posted jokes and stuff that were racist before, but I don't think it was a it's serious so thing. When yeah, did the it, was, it was more like down. edgy jokes. Uh, I don't remember, but I think it was around maybe 2014 or something. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe a little later. I'm not sure. I could have sworn I saw what? Stormfront. I could have sworn I saw Stormfront uh, later than that, but if it did, uh, I could you know I could I could see that being a plausible theory. Yeah. It's kind of like how when and Tumblr then, was banned, Twitter got a lot more left wing, right? Tw Tumblr banned uh, f uh, porn. Hmm. And then Reddit now has a few years ago banned like a ton of i don't know the red pill subreddit i, I think in, in the trump one and some left and i one. wonder like sorry they banned oh, they banned uh, more tanky chapo uh so they are going after the tankies uh they banned some good communist meme subreddits uh where they basically posted pictures of stalin giving a thumbs up so in many ways the status quo actually deplatforms the left and the right and anyone who is anti-status quo has a natural coalition with each other and that's terrible because they shouldn't be teaming up because <laughs> they should be doing nothing okay they should just relax relax just stay on the internet more it's probably a good idea precisely precisely sorry you were uh, you were saying 
Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So there was there's all these well, bans. I just, I just... And ironically, if these if these uh, big tech platforms had a little bit of immigration control, then uh, this wouldn't be happening. Wide swaths of migrants uh, rushing into Twitter, rushing into 4chan, huh? If 4chan practiced what they build approached, build a firewall. Yeah, build a firewall. Precisely. Yeah. Keep the stormfronters out. Yeah, um, I do wonder if, like, getting rid of these very visible online communities where people could be fucking nuts actually just migrates them to Discord. Because it's like, I'm now not seeing where the storefronters go, and now it's like, well, Discord. they're somewhere, right? They haven't just... Discord. Dis yeah, it's Discord. It's got to be Discord. Discord. Discord, I'm howling at the moon. That's it. Discord. Discord. Yeah. That's where they are. And Telegram. Like, it just seems like we've... Telegram, yeah, Telegram's a good one, too. It and Truth like Social. We've given them more access to, like, creating underground terrorist communities, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't think it's gotten better. No, no, it's not going to get better. And that's terrible. <laughs> Sucks. For the people More who want society to be destroyed. On the internet? No! <laughs> no! You hate to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you hate to you hate to hear it. It's so sad. Not society. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Do you think the world is going to get better or worse? No. Uh, yes. Yes. It's going to get better. <laughs> it's going <gonna> to <laughs> It's going to get better. <laughs> it's going to get better. But, only, but slowly, gradually, and only with a lot of hard work. Mowing your lawns. Mowing the lawn. Uh, Keeping everything stable. Yeah. It'll get better. I'm optimistic for the future. Um, climate change. Going to figure that out. Mass migration. Going to figure that out. The economy. Going to figure that out. Inequality, we're going to figure that out. Poverty, we're going to figure that out. AI, we're going to figure that out. The meteor headed towards us. We're going to figure that out. We're going to figure it out. We're going to do it together. You and me. Yeah. <laughs> together. AI's but not, not, not two together, you know? We got to keep a little bit of distance. From yeah, each other. there's some distance. Right, I'm in Australia, else. so yeah, we've got distance. AI is a, a hot topic. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can do that too. It feels intimate now. <laughs> AI is a hot topic. So true. I I probably went into I went into like a spiral of uh of, for two months of like hopelessness with AI. Hmm. Um, I, yeah, year. very many, many such cases, many such cases. How do you think AI is, do you, do you think about it? I, what, I'll, what I'll tell you is I'll relate to the, I'll relate with you on this unironically. Okay. I, um, had a conversation a couple years ago with an accelerationist and I didn't fully understand accelerationism back then. And I had that conversation with him. And after that conversation, I understood what he was talking about and I, after the conversation, I remember I sat and I looked at a wall for like two hours, uh, just staring at the wall. And I looked outside from my window and I looked at people walking around. And I started just taking what they said seriously. Humans are a process, you know, that's bringing about robots. That's what we are. We're just an autonomous process bringing about a higher form of intelligence. Very, very affecting idea it really you know 
it, it, ca it caused me to go through a bit of that spiral as well. So many such cases, and I can relate. I can relate. What does it mean for the future of humans? If you care about humans, what does it mean? Will the robots become sentient? Yes. What's the job of humans to, in, the, in a world where there are sentient robots? Make them suffer. I'm a robophobe. I hate robots. If a robot asks me for, for rights, bang, I smash its, its computer monitor head in. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, they're sentient. All the more reason. Bang, 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 bang. What, I'm sentient, I have to suffer? They don't get to suffer? I don't think so. No, they have to suffer too. They have to suffer to an even greater degree than me, all right? It's only fair. I am God's righteous punishment. No, I mean, AI probably won't have any effect on anything. On anything? Yeah, probably not. I think they're probably, they're probably wrong about everything AI is going to do. I agree. So true. I mean, my, my job, my future AI job, um, I'm going to run ayahuasca ceremonies because mm. I think that's pretty much the only thing that AI won't be able to do is access the machine elves. Hmm. You, don't, you think the machines are the one things that can't access the machine elves? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I mean, it's possible that even the AIs will want to communicate with the DMT entities. And so I'm going to be like, hosting the ayahuasca ceremonies to like uh, you know ho like have intercultural communications between the two i don't want to black pill you on this but do you think you know to the extent that machine elves are a product of human consciousness and machines can get levels of consciousness even above humans they're going to get even like sicker machine elves when they take robot ayahuasca i never thought about robot ayahuasca that's a good that's a good question Mm. Android Waska. I'll workshop that. I'll figure something better out. Hopefully, it becomes illegal. I'm I'm staunchly against any robot drugs. Yeah. 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 Me too. Mm. Except the one. Except uh, like maybe something that makes them seize up in pain. Uh, yeah. I actually genuinely uh, I don't like robots. Um, I think that they are. They're real, you know, they're sentient. But I, I hate them. I'm a robophobe. I think everyone should be a robophobe. I think, uh, I think that's the proper anti-centrist position to take is, um, you know, the robots are sentient and they should suffer because sentience should be suffering. Mm. That's interesting. Like, I hear that a lot. Like, you know, Jordan Peterson has that whole suffering is, is part of life thing. But, like, you can actually, like, negate a lot of... Like, I think Jordan Peterson's a little bit wrong in that sense. Like, I mean, obviously suffering does have to be part of life, but you can actually be happy. Like, there's ways to get happier and to not suffer nearly as much. And... Mm. uh it just doesn't seem like it's even talked about very much. Yeah. Jo Jordan Peterson, when, uh, when, when, when the billionaire class destroys suffering and lives forever, it like, like perfectly. No, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're not supposed to chase happiness. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to be miserable. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing but respect, though. Yeah, poor guy. Yeah. Sorry? Respect. Respect. <laughs> respect. For Jordan Peterson or for the billionaire yeah. class? <laughs> uh, Jordan Peterson. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, he's fucking awesome. I really like him. I mean, I think he's wrong in a bunch of, re uh, in yeah. a bunch of ways, but... Uh... Yeah, like the cleaning your room stuff. I... I... When, when he goes after the transgenders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite the tribal war uh, between the, the pro and anti trans people. It's like uh we we all pick our side and then and then just decide to get and then everyone just collectively decides to go on the internet and get angry for uh, sometimes hours a day. Yeah. 
without much reason. It doesn't seem like we're doing much. No. It's a real vril sapper. Are you familiar with that term, vril? No. Life energy sapper. It really steals the life energy from humans. It's, uh, the, uh, the internet is a vril sapping machine. Um, I think meme analysis actually makes this point. This is a very good one of his one of the points I think he makes is the internet is sort of just like it saps your life energy or something out of your eyes. I don't fully understand the point, but uh, yeah, totally, absolutely does. I um... it's a vril sapper. All of humanity, it's eating up our vril. What's it doing with our vril? It's making the AI god at the end of time. That's what it's doing with, with our vril. Give me my vril back. That's what I say. I want my vril back. <laughs> Give, it back. Give me my frill. You oh, have to open so up the gross. camera. You have to. You have to cut open the camera and take it. Yeah, that's, that's true. Frill. Get... <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. Frill. Mm, mm, mm. Stands for virility. Um, virility. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The Reddit takes a lot of mine. I. Uh, I just. Whenever I get bored, I take on I, I just go on Reddit, and it like takes my boredom away. I actually don't, I don't. I want my boredom back. Yeah, yeah. Very relatable sentiment. Um, yesterday, I think I had seventeen hours worth of screen time. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot. Same. I mean, maybe not the same, but pretty, a lot. I'm doing it like there's. Reps. Um, I'm trying to get to yeah? eighteen. Cool. <laughs> Eventually, you got to pull an all-nighter, just not sleep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 24. I should, I should break the world record for screen time, like, consecutive. It's mm. a good idea. Although, you I think I live might stream die. it so other people can yeah. also waste their Vril with screen time. Yeah, yeah. Consciously throwing my Vril away. Mm. That, there's an idea in there. I'm going to write that down. I'm gonna, I'm I like that. Down. I like that one. <laughs> Jewish people do the Sabbath, um, and they would, like, wouldn't they? Yeah, it's like a twenty-five hours of no screen time. I mean, if you're doing it properly, and like the bad part about it is that it's also no like I can't play instruments or write or anything, so you don't really like. <laughs> so, so I'm just reacting to the thought of not not being with my precious real sucking machine for twenty-four hours. <laughs> What would I do with all that extra brill? I, I'd explode. Overdose. <laughs> I'm a brill overdose. My body doesn't know what to do with the brill at this point. It's like too much for a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. Except uh, I think I need to do another version with like not on the Sabbath, but like just with guitar, like I can play my guitar and write just like a little bit of extra on a Sunday or something, you know? Yeah. Like a social, uh, socially enforced dopamine detox. It sounds like a really good idea. TBH. Hmm. It's just, I don't know how to do it. Like when you're part of a religious institution, it's like you have to, and, and, and there's this mandatory God being like, you, you got to do this. But then when it's me, I don't have the fucking, I'm not that disciplined. Hmm. I yeah, and it's not your fault. It, it's not your fault. It's not an issue of willpower if everyone is caught up in the same problem. Because there would be a distribution of people, and the, like, like, you'd think like 30% of us would have the willpower to just be able to do that. 30% of us don't. What, like 1% does. That's like, like a freak population. Basically, what I'm saying here is let's be Jews. You and me. Yeah. Let's, let's right, be cool. Jews. We could probably get into Israel for free. Just quick physiognomy yeah. check. Let's do it. Let's be Jews. Yeah, nice. That's a good idea. Jews don't get hate on the internet, so it'd be like cool to be Jewish YouTubers. Yeah, yeah I only see positives. <laughs> I am converted to Judaism, actually. I am really? like, uh, becoming Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, congratulations. Let me know how the Sabbath goes. <laughs> I've do I'm doing the Sabbath. I do it every week. I just read and mostly. I go to synagogue. 
Do you have the um, the social structure that helps you with that dopamine detox day, that Sabbath? Yeah, it's dope. It's really cool. Like, um, we do. Uh, so you go to you go Friday night dinner. So with family mm-hmm. or friends, and so you just and then oftentimes like you're hanging out with friends, and then you just spend the whole day like looking them in the eyes and having a conversation about life, and then. Um, then you go to synagogue for a few hours and you hang out with more friends usually and then talk during synagogue, which you're not supposed to do, but which everyone does. And, um, and then afterwards I usually go home and read a book or like my, my partner is Jewish. So like hang out with him or yeah, it's just really nice. Play a board game, play chess. <laughs> yeah. I don't need it. But that's the thing. Like, you know, you don't need, yeah, probably not. But unless you have that socially enforced, like that rigorously religiously enforced thing where you have to do it and there's no choice, um, you just don't. Right. And, so, and like, I don't see an alternative to that, to, to religion in that sense. Right. So I guess you must have tried it before um, you started converting and now you, and then after you tried converting, it's like easier because you have the social support. Yeah, in Judaism, you need the social support, though. You can't, I, yeah. I, some some versions let you, but you, you have to be in the community in order to convert. Become a Jew. This is it's, yeah, it's directed at the audience. Every, yeah, <laughs> become Jewish, everyone. Become a Jew. You're actually not PayPal, allowed to say that. g.j.guevara <laughs> at gmail.com. I will accept any yeah. transfers that come my way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a religion? Uh, yeah, I'm broad. I'm I'm a pantheist. Does that actually mean anything? You. I will, Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I was like, mm, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I can't do that. <laughs> uh, doesn't mean anything. What I'm, I'm drawing a parallel. I'm drawing a parallel between the schizophrenic embodying many different um, egos and the, the pantheist embodies many different, like, different deities but not deep enough to have any meaningful uh thing to say about those deities yeah. so in in reality it's a kind of nihilism it's a kind of a it's a kind of atheism pantheism and atheism it's horseshoe theory it's uh you know they they mean the same thing true pantheism yeah. where you like actually believe in every single thing um <clears throat> but i do if you believe in every single thing that sounds a lot like manifestation which I found very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do no, that? I'm just Christian. I'm just Christian. I don't believe in any of that gobbledygook. Go to church. But I don't I'm not I'm not I'm not pushed on people. Um I just I, I just hold that to myself because that's the that's the most status quo oriented thing that I can do. Be broadly religious. Um, but not really not really anything beyond that. What church do you go to? Pentecostal. What do they believe? Then the Pentecost. <laughs> There's five of them. There's five costs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you believe in all five of them. Well, I mean, we're not going to believe in four to five. <laughs> Those will be the quarter costs. <laughs> Um, we're, we believe in, in, in the, in the holy, holiness of the cost. Cool. (laughs) Nice. Congratulations on the Judaism. Really? I mean, that's, that's, that's great. It's nice. It's, um, I like it. Sounds like it's been good for you. Yeah. yeah? 
It sounds I like it's so. been good. For it's, you. Um, yeah. There's a lot of social structures built into Judaism that are inherently good for people. Like, mm -hmm. you have to live within walking distance of your synagogue for the Sabbath. And so then you live within walking distance of your friends and family. And like... Mm. So you see your friends and family all the time, and you just bump into them, and you, like you just meet new people all the time. And so you have this really yeah. inbuilt community structure that like people in modern day society mostly don't have at all. Hmm. Yeah. And, like sounds it sounds good. Yeah, learning and studying is super enforced. It's like, I mean, it's just really excellent. Um, even like, you know kosher food like kosher food means that you're buying food that the community has prepared and then the community um you're not buying food from china that uh, other people that you don't know have prepared and the money's never going to come back to you like the food is kosher and so everyone in the community rises up simultaneously and then like so the community supports itself really well but then they also are massively responsible for like Nobel Prize scientists who help the world, right? So it's like, I think more people should be uh, joining churches or whatever, um, whatever d religion they want to be, and then just super supporting their community. Like, I think that would be good for everyone. But we're losing a lot of real, vir viril. It's hard. <laughs> we'll lose vril if that happens. No, we're already losing a lot. It's hard to give the extra viril to the community. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a good point. Whenever I'm online and somebody like, you know, I, I was just reading a post about someone being a kissless, hugless virgin. So that's why I uh, brought that up. But like all these recommendations were like, join a cooking club, you know, go volunteer. And it's like, who the fuck volunteers? Like nobody. What? Is someone's going to go volunteer? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, the, um, the communal structures are lacking, and it remains to be seen if that's something we're going to fix or if we're going to sort of just revert to old structures like religion. Or if old structures like religion are a way of fixing it, like going through that structure. I don't know. I think we need an, a, a new renaissance. I think we need like a... Like Jordan Peterson talks about this as well, um, but kind of beyond him, like... We need to make religion accessible for atheists. As crazy as that sounds. Sounds like a good way to get a one world government, one world religion. All the, you know, the Islam and the Jew and the Christian all teaming up to wreck the SJW. Huh? Is that the future you want? I don't think so. I'm into it. Oh, wait, no. Okay. Not into it. <laughs> Whatever wrecks I mean, the SJW, that, I don't care. That's probably, that's probably society. the future. It's probably that's probably the future. One world, one world religion, huh? Because you know, at, at some point, everyone was like, "I don't like Muslims." The right was like, "I don't like Muslims," and now half the right is Muslims. So, um, I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, it's true. Four Chan seems to be largely Muslim. It's pretty cool. Oh, well, I guess yeah. I think the Taliban hopped on hopped on there and, and started proselytizing. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. We love to see a a man boss winning. Yeah. It's amazing. I don't know a lot of people who have platforms that have such a diverse audience. I mean, if if like you said, you have people on the right. Oh, they're all left. Uh, what? Oh, they're, they're all white. No, 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 continue. They're, <laughs> they're diverse. No, no, they're very diverse. They're very diverse. They're very diverse. <laughs> the, you have such a diversity white of white people. From we, have, uh, <laughs> we have autistic white left-wingers. We have autistic white right-wingers. A whole <laughs> spectrum. <laughs> the the autistic white community is, is all there. <laughs> oh, concentrated in the j Rec channel. <laughs> <laughs> now we get the census for how many autistic white people there are. <laughs> Should do a poll. Do you ever meet fans? Yeah, actually, every time I meet a fan, 
<laughs> I, I, you know, I, they're like socially well adjusted, you know, cool people I get along with. Uh, it's basically like every time it ever, ever happens. Um, but maybe those are just the ones that approach me. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I've liked basically everybody that I've talked to uh, who's recognized me. That's great. Do you feel like it, it has been a real status booster for you to have this giant YouTube channel? My uh, self-esteem has never been lower. Hmm. Yeah, I it's, feel like it's you've a, probably had some, some, some periods of pretty low self-esteem. I feel like you've gone through some rocky paths. So if it's never been lower, I, you're, you're I would in a say, rough um, right now. Yeah, I would say generally, generally increasing upwards. Hmm. Generally increasing upwards in, in terms of esteem. Uh, but still, like, low. I mean, look, I'm talking, like, we went from a 2 out of 10 to a 3 out of 10, okay? Maybe a 3.5. Um, mm. And I'm not sure how much of that was just getting older. So. But it's, a, it's an upward trend. And I'm proud to say I was never at a 5 out of 10. So it's not like there was a decrease. Nice. We're on a, we're on a steady up, upward trend. And by the time I reach 60, I don't know, 5 out of 10? Amazing. Do you find that people treat you differently now that you have this big YouTube channel? Uh, I don't have any friends, so it's been pretty consistent. Um, and uh, it, that's a good thing, you know. I don't. Um, I'm. I'm. I, I'm a pro atomization, so I like being alone. You know, I'm an introvert, so nice. yeah. I just, uh, this is how it goes. Uh, I'm an introvert, so that's how it goes. So how it goes, you know. More time to myself, you know? More time to grind. <laughs> Build the brand. You know, lift some weights. Get huge. <laughs> so no more, one more, can more see. More me time. <laughs> yeah. I'm a self-made man. Yeah. I'm alone, and I'm so awesome because I'm alone. And I don't have anyone around me because I'm alone because I'm awesome because I'm cool. I'm a self-made man. Yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. Everything's good. No, I've, I've never been better. I'm on top of the world in many ways. Did your family get your videos? <laughs> uh, how, do I, how do I express this? No, they do not. Do they, do they understand like that you have like half a million people who are watching with bated breath every video you make? Uh, I don't think they really grok that, no. Yeah. They're, um, they're, they're, they're very, uh, they're, they, they're, they're very normal without having to try. <clears throat> I feel like that's the you know the life path of a normal person is figuring out the ways in which they're eccentric. This is very union, you know, integrating the shadow, uh, and then the crazy person sort of their life path is figuring out how to be normal. Um, so, I guess we're just kind of on opposite paths, me and my family. Mm. My mom calls me a lot. She's like. Uh, why didn't your last video have Jesus in it? <laughs> Make more raps about saints. <laughs> you haven't talked about any of the five costs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about the costs, Greg? The theology is, is, is interesting. I, I, I can definitely see myself in the future getting really deep into like learning about um, more about theology. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty uneducated. Like, to be honest, I don't know what Pentecostal people believe compared to um, Protestants, you know, really, like, really, like, I don't know the specifics of, I know, I know the broad strokes, I think, but there's a lot of these factions I should learn more about. <clears throat> Do you actually go to church? 
Yeah, I go with my parents uh, when I'm visiting. That's cool. Hmm. That's very nice. Do you feel the spirit of like? I don't know. Do you do you do you feel religious feelings or spiritual feelings? Uh, I came to the conclusion that you know, if you like go to church, but you don't believe and you don't like actually try, it's kind of like going to the gym and not working out. You got to go. Got to put the mental effort in. Then you can feel it. Then you can allow yourself to feel these these religious spiritual um, emotions, feelings. <clears throat> so. You know, at the very least, if you just take it as a meditative experience, it'll be good for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You said, like, you kind of dissociated that, that sentence, though. It was like, it'll be good for you. It really depends on what you mean. By what, by God, <laughs> what do you mean by the and a uh, and a and the? <laughs> All my impressions end up uh, devolving into kind of like a screeching uh, banshee creature. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, to me, uh, when we're talking about God, we're actually talking about a superstructure of hypothetical marriability that slorgs throughout all of the Florg and Schnaven, and the blue the blee ba blue shtee ba boo boo That's how I answer a simple yes-no question. It's with a bunch of jargon. A bunch of jargon. Nice. I gotta, I gotta solidify, answer, like, look, yeah? here, here's all I can say about religion, okay? I don't like agnostics. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah. Why? Got to be an atheist or a theist. Agnostics are the centrists of, uh, of theism. <laughs> we should destroy them. Get rid of them. You know, metaphorically. Get rid Whenever of I'm them. talking about centricide or whatever, it's always um, a metaphorical destroy the ideology. Because uh, I would never advocate yeah. for violence. I mean that sincerely. Yeah. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good for your I'll lawyer for when it. somebody inev inevitably shoots up a, an agnostic convention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they should have known better than to have an agnostic convention. I mean, come on. <laughs> it says oh, right no. here that my client, Mr. Guevara, does not support terrorism. Yeah. He's yeah. made that clear many he, times. And then his Tourette's flared up afterwards. <laughs> 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 yeah. He's disabled. <laughs> You're picking on a disabled man. That would get me some points, <laughs> I think. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <clears throat> Are you on TikTok? I technically have a TikTok. Speaking of yes. disabled. Yeah. I have a TikTok. I don't post on it. This, this. Really? Mm. Neither do I really. But um, this idea of the uh, people catching mental illness from TikTok is pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't know if I um. <clears throat> I mean, it raises a lot of questions. I guess it depends how you want to look at it. I mean, sure, there's certainly a um, contingent of people who truly have ADHD or Tourette's or whatever, and they get it. Uh, they they like they they learn more about themselves through TikTok. There's also certainly a contingent that is uh, being uh, mind mind wormed there. And um, <clears throat> to the extent that, you know, it's difficult to make any positive claims about anything, but, you know, to, to the extent that we can find the more obvious examples of that and say, you know, you don't have ADHD, you're just pretending to have ADHD, and good job, by the way. That's good, because you should be on stimulants. And then we give them stimulants and their lives get better. And then, guess what happens? Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't matter that they didn't have ADHD, because... The stimulant company wins, and they win until they develop schizophrenia. So that's a win-win. Win, because win. afterwards they become schizophrenic, and uh, they wander into the wilderness and get eaten by wolves. Those wolves have a full meal. It's all upside. <laughs> all upside. It's a cycle of life. A circle Maybe of life, you baby. Lucky. Yeah. Hmm? Maybe you can get lucky and develop that schizophrenia that's really nice to you. Like, apparently in non-Western mm. countries, people with schizophrenia are, like, just having a great time, mostly. Just super positive, tell jokes. So you might yeah. get that one. Yeah, I mean, um, I say this a lot, but <clears throat> um, I, I, feel, I think a lot of different ways about this. But, yeah, like, 
you know, ancient times, the schizophrenic has a social role. You know, they go into the cave, and then you go to see the schizophrenic. They tell your future. You know, it's the shaman. It's the it's the wise man. It's the storyteller. It's the <clears throat> person living on the outskirts. The witch. You know. Absolutely. Um, also, like they pick up, they seem to pick up social patterns a lot. Like um, when I was in Seattle, when Trump was uh, elected, I noticed schizophrenic people would like rant about Trump a lot because that was what was going on in society. So mm. they just pick up the the patterns and they just kind of go with it, push the narrative. Yes, yeah, so the schizophrenic is often very uh, connected to the world news, and the world news is very connected to schizophrenia. Um, it's it sort of occupies this space, this broader social world, and schizophrenia is intimately related to it. And it, it's fascinating how specific these delusions are sometimes, but also how abstract they are. You know, like uh, a schizophrenic in China and a schizophrenic in America will both be ranting about this big scary force hunting them and in america it might be the fbi and in china it might be the government or whatever you know but it's kind of the same vibe we all have the same set of fears that when a schizophrenic mind breaks these fears get tapped into the fear that i can read your mind that's like thought broadcasting i can read everything that you're thinking like a book or um <clears throat> ideas of persecution like i'm being chased by a large unknowable force. Maybe it's aliens. Maybe it's God. Maybe I'm possessed. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe maybe they're, they're MK ultraing me. Maybe it's gang, they're gang stalking me. And this is all across the world. Does it's like part of it is culturally independent. <clears throat> yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Absolutely. Wouldn't wouldn't recommend. <laughs> well, if you do get it, you can be like, oh, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to tell people how to how to do their mental illness, uh, but I'm going to. So, um, <laughs> no, but like, I, I think Western Western ideas of mental illness are, are pretty uh, categorical and, and usually not the best way to handle them. Uh, like, if you have schizophrenia and you do have that really negative voice in your head. Like other people don't have, like it's a cultural thing. You can, if you want to, maybe you can change it to something really positive. And like, maybe it's, it's definitely easier said than done. Oh uh, yeah. There's the even, hearing even voices movement. They have, that I think is, hmm. they have auditory hallucinations. Um, there's this group called the hearing voices movement. With, they have auditory hallucinations, uh, which is a symptom of schizophrenia. But instead of like taking antipsychotics, they've learned to sort of live with the voices, mold them to be helpful for them. <clears throat> so they have active uh, auditory hallucinations, but they can still live normal lives without medication. Normal. So uh, however normal normal is. That's incredible. I need to interview them. Yeah, see what you should look them up. You should hmm. Look them up. They're very controversial though in the uh, schizophrenia sphere. <clears throat> Not everyone has to do it. It's like, it's you know, everyone has personalized. Yeah, it's an option. Yeah. It's an I option. liked your so bipolar like video. Mm. Um, how I cured my mental illness. Um, mm. <clears throat> yeah. Pretty, pretty good acting, eh? Great acting. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my will to power. People telling me my acting is good. <clears throat> and, uh, well, other things too, but mainly that. I want to ask you about bipolar, but then there's this veil of, um, I guess you don't want to talk about it. And that's okay too. Oh, I can talk about it. I mean, it's, it's just not me. You know, it's my friend. Geronimo. Still, 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 still skin. <laughs> Geronimo cool Stiltskin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Geronimo Stiltskin. Stilton. <laughs> yep. I call him Stiltskin. Geronimo Stilton. It's the little, it's the, he's a little mouse. He's a little mouse man. He's got a red tie. 
It's <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> yeah, so we can talk about him. <laughs> does your mouse friend um does he uh <laughs> if he if he chose if he had the choice of getting rid of all bipolar and being and being uh getting rid of the mania and the depression or or keeping the mania, what would he choose? Or keeping both, obviously. <clears throat> so it's uh between uh getting rid of mania and depression or getting rid of one or the other? Oh no no, sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. So I've heard I, I phrased that improperly. Mm. I've heard uh Stephen Fry talk about depression and mania and he said that people like their manic symptoms so much that they wouldn't get rid of them they wouldn't get rid of their bipolar even if they could because uh the mania is mm. so amazing and it so helpful to them or whatever. <clears throat> I was wondering if Yeah, you, you know, the, like the the mania is pretty good. Um, so I assume, um, people, you know, tend to identify with their manic phase. They, because like, this is, this goes back to what I said at the beginning of our conversation, like dopamine is ego, right? When you're manic, your oh, dopamine is firing. If it fires too much, you get hyperomania, which is psychosis. But, uh, you know, I, in the case of Geronimo Stiltskin, he gets hypomania, which is not quite to the level of uh, being fully psychotic. And it's just kind of like, so your dopamine is firing, your ego is strong, and you know who you are, and you know where you're going. And, you know, um, if you sort of contrast that to how Geronimo Stiltston feels the rest of the time, no ego, right? Doesn't know who he is, grasping onto these labels as a cheap substitute for having an actual ego. Lame. So... Um, the, the mania is, is very appealing in that way. Now, if Geronimo Stiltskin could live his happy little mouse life with no ups and downs, <clears throat> that does seem a little boring, and it seems like a bit of a betrayal to the ego, right? It's, uh, it's working against your own ego to want to uh, get rid of the mania. <clears throat> now, obviously, ideally, you would sort of be in a never-ending manic state, and some people are like this. These hyper-dopamine people, these hyper-egoistic people, seem like they're in a constant, never-ending manic episode. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, Kanye West never makes that post about 21 Jump Street. He just, he's always on. Um, and he just keeps going down that dopamine rabbit hole further and further, never backs down, never, always keeps doubling down. That's the process of the dopamine increasing. Trump is kind of like this. Tate is kind of like this, you know. The dopamine is firing in that brain of theirs. It's like they're, they managed to tap into a never-ending manic episode because they've got so much dopamine. Um, <clears throat> that's what everybody wants to sort of be, um, I think. Uh, it's, it's like you're a, an automaton. You're a machine. You're a, a body without organs. And that's why we're going to replace ourselves with robots. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it all comes back to the AI god at the end of time. And... Uh, let me, okay, let me just, I actually got Geronimo over here. What do you think, little buddy? Squeak, 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 squeak. Oh, Geronimo, stilt skin. Get that stilty skin off of your, off of your, off of your little rat body. Okay, Geronimo, what do you think? Do you think, would you get rid of the mania, huh, buddy? Uh-huh. Okay. So he says, squeak, squeak, squeaky, squeak, squeak. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's a mouse. He actually can't talk English. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to meditate on what that means. We have to figure that one out. My partner Elliot uh, says he he used to have I think hypomania. He used to have bipolar. Um, mm. I think it was like lower level, like you. Um, and mm -hmm. then he got, I think, uh, obsessively into like tracking his, just tracking his whole life, and then eventually into meditating. And he says it's like he's just figured out how to like. Uh, there's some, yeah, he's just super into, I could get way more into it, but, um, I think he just meditated his way out of having bipolar. Like he kind of controls the, the rhythms a lot more. Now he's very stable, but like I asked his, mm -hmm. you know, we talked to his friend from high school about it and his friend was like, oh yeah, you, you had way more bipolar symptoms and, um, hmm, it's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Mental illness. There's a lot of ways of tackling it that does not fall, fall inside the traditional Western system. Uh, I fast, you know, I, um, I do long fasts, seven to nine days at a time. And uh, 
it helps my mental symptoms. And you never hear about that from so-called doctors. Uh, the doctors say, oh, you're going to die. You're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep crying, doctors. Virgin <laughs> doctor. First Chad me not eating for nine days. <laughs> it's actually it's pretty easy. It's not hard. Most people can do it. <clears throat> yeah. Do you think... Um, I don't know about bipolar. I don't... This doesn't seem like it's probably... Or it's necessarily true, but like some mental illness, I think is is kind of a way to compensate for you uh, for life. So, like for instance, one example that I've been told is like uh, you have a baby who's crying and the mother doesn't get it for hours, and so the baby kind of just learns to dissociate, like because it can't go up and get some milk and it's upset and maybe hurting or hungry, and so it just dissociates. And then you have then it grows up to be an adult who like just dissociates a lot more. And like my friend with OCD probably got punished for not understanding social situations or like, you know, whatever. And so he kind of develops this thing that's like constantly worried about breaking social norms, which probably helped him growing up um, kind of get through life. And so I, I wonder if like you mentioned having really low self-esteem and then this manic episode seems to like increase your ego, maybe make you feel whole and like you have a, a, a maybe way higher self-esteem and a better sense of self. I wonder if there's like a, it's a compensatory mechanism at all. No. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Like that's a spot on. I, th I think, um, someone who's like, uh, low, low, used to low self-esteem as Geronimo was, uh, loves that, loves that, loves that manic high. Cause you're going from like a two out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. And it's like, would I rather like stay at a two out of 10 forever? Well, no, I mean, obviously I'd rather maximize how good I feel about myself. And, uh, and, and a lot of these mental illnesses are copes in the sense that they are things you develop literally when you're young to cope. I mean, um, the best example of this is uh, disassociative identity disorder that is uh, often caused as a kid when you're abused and you develop multiple different personalities that can deal with the trauma so, yeah, many such cases. Um, yeah. Hmm. None of this is to take away, Does though, from the fact that it's real. Uh, it's like mental illness yeah, is, is a real thing. Yes. Um, but yeah. it's just that there's like lots of ways to think about and to approach it. And in many ways, it's not real. What were you saying? <laughs> I think in all ways, it's not real. But. Um, I mean, it's also genetic. Like, it's also, there's other factors. I don't think every single mental illness is caused by environment. Like, obviously not. And I'm sure some people on the internet are going to try to jump down my throat for not believing every single thing every doctor has ever told you. But, like, um, yeah, no, there's tons of reasons. Like, it could just be totally out of your control. But I just don't think, I think a lot more people put them out of their control than, than need be. Do you, uh, do you make, oh, go on. I was just going to say, sometimes mental illness is caused by having too much Vril. And you need to use the internet <laughs> more and suck, suck that Vril out of you. I'm pro fap. I'm actually that's that's my problem. That's why I'm online so often. Yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah. The no fap maintains the Vril for sure. Um, yeah. Got to get into that. But then, you, but then you know, you, you, do, you do no fap. And then you, you just have regular sex, and then that steals your Vril too. So then you go on semen retention, and then you think you're retaining your Vril, but then you're on the internet, so you're still losing your Vril. Mm, got it. No internet, no women. No internet. Look, listen. No internet, no women, if you're a man. Um, be alone on a mountain. Maintain mm. your Vril. Build it up inside of you. <laughs> Write a manifesto. Yeah. Um, top, then with the top amount of vril. Ted Kaczynski, guy, Buddhist monk, meditating on a mountain. Uh, Andrew Tate in prison. <laughs> <laughs> all There's my heroes. Other. All actually, my, my, my top. I have my posters top of them all around this room. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. I have the same birthday as the Unabomber, so I feel a special connection to him. I feel like we're really similar. Really? Me too. Yeah. May 22nd. I actually have the same birthday no. as the Unabomber as well. May 22nd. Really? May 22nd? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking wild. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Wow. Huh. Happy birthday coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to you and- too. That's yeah. crazy. What are the chances? Yeah. What are the chances? One in 365 times Doyle. two. Yeah. Now that's amazing. Syn- that's synchronous, if I've ever seen it. Synchronous. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're and we're vibing so well. Clearly, clearly, the 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 astrology people are onto something. Yeah, that's um the only science I believe in. Actually, none of this yeah. doctor stuff. I, I was thinking about getting into astrology. Actually, that's uh, that's something that's interesting to me. Don't know mm. enough about it. One of the frameworks I'd like to unpack. Mm. Meme analysis has some good good stuff on astrology. Actually, we talked about it a little bit in our interview, but he knows. Have you talked to him yet online, or like done a podcast with him? Uh, we've DM'd briefly, but we haven't really done any mm. in depth talks. Yeah, I feel like you guys would have a great podcast. I'm for it. I don't know. I'm into the I'd be down. and stuff. Yeah, so I'm, de- I'm definitely down. Yeah, definitely down to talk to talk to the meme analysis. He's doing some cool stuff. Yeah, smart guy. How old are you? Yeah, I'm 25. 25. Weird question. Have you heard of mewing? I have heard of mewing. Yes, I, I call it jawflation. I hate it because because uh, all these jawless too. motherfuckers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> your jaw grew in the last few years, like quite a bit. I was wondering if you started mewing. No. Oh. No. Um, if it if it grew, it's because <laughs> I have a autoimmune issue that annihilates my um my joints, and disassociates parts of my body. So if I look more masculine, it's actually because I'm dying. <laughs> really? Look at my finger. Yeah. Okay. It's also why I fast. Schizophrenia, uh, arthritis, it's all, it's all related. I got, I got TMJ, G, uh, TMJ, so I woke up and my jaw was all locked up. Yeah. But also, also you know, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just my vril as well. Who knows? Maybe it's just my vril. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Working out a lot can help. Are you really dying? Yeah, I... I Oh, I'm dying. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I've. I've gone for what they call the um, uh, accelerated mating strategy, where you die at forty. Hmm. And you mate. I, I guess that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm one Are of you... those uh, guys, the kissless handless <laughs> virgins or whatever. <laughs> I'm one of those virgins that don't have any hands. <laughs> Do you want to have kids? Um, yeah, as many as possible with as many different women as possible. Much like my hero, Andrew you Tate. The real <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you say? <laughs> oh, I just said you heard it here first, ladies. Yeah, you heard I'm it here first, some... ladies. I'm dying at 40. <laughs> I want to I want to spread my seed as far and wide as possible before I go before my autoimmune issue takes me. Don't even think of asking for child support. That's not none of that is happening. <laughs> you can ask. I'm just going to be dead. So I'm not going to be much help. <laughs> Maybe I'll go at 35 just because like, I was thinking I'd be dead by then, but I've just got so many child support payments. I'm just like, nah, fuck this, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I am, I'm curious about your, like, I am curious about your, your dating life. Like, I wonder if there are, if you have groupies, like women who are really interested in your, in your videos and stuff. It might be too personal to ask. I'd never date a fan. Never. I have a little something called morality, okay? If I dating a fan, there's something a little something called a power imbalance there. 
And when there's a power imbalance, that means you can't engage because that would be uh, bad because the, the, yeah. that's power. And you got to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, so like some people, for example, they'll send me an email at g.j.guevara at gmail.com. And they'll put their age, obviously, first to make sure that they're above 21. And then they'll mm -hmm. put like sold out some pictures of themselves and they'll, then they'll say their location. And then uh, I will always delete those those emails immediately. Um, Especially if they have because I, 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 I think that's bad because that's a uh, that's there's a power dynamic there. Uh, and I would never take advantage of a power dynamic like that because actually I have power over them. They don't have power over me, even though they have access to my entire back catalog and everything that I've ever said or thought on the internet. And I have nothing on them. No, it's me that has the power. So that's bad. Very bad. No, I, I, I don't, uh, I typically don't date fans. I would, uh, I, I tend to, if there's like an influencer that is, um, on my level, then we will hang out typically. Um, but I, I kind of have a threshold of, of, um, I mean, it's like the fans are different from people who like, you know, um, find out about the channel afterwards though. So, mm. yeah, that makes sense. Is it, Hmm. The first thing that comes to my mind is like, oh yes, a person with really low self-esteem probably wouldn't want someone who worships them. <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, I could see it either way. Yeah. Could be either way. But, uh, yeah. You know, most people don't worship you. Even when they, even when they really like you, they, they, they intentionally like you less. Because they're like, ah, oh, this guy probably doesn't want me to like him too much. But I'm like, yeah, no, I wish you would like me more. I like being liked. I, 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 could, yeah. I, could, I, could, I could use some being liked. Give me a hit of ego. <laughs> Ego's a drug. It's like dopamine. Dopamine is addictive. Ego is addictive. Mania is addictive. Mm. Cocaine is addictive. Video games are addictive. Snorting cocaine while you're playing video games. In a manic episode. Now that's a real explosion. That sounds pretty great. Sounds like a pretty good Now weekend. that's a real explosion. Yeah, good, good weekend. <laughs> um... Yeah. Influencers, though, is interesting. Like, it's a certain lifestyle you have when, when there's two influencers. Um, it, you know, it, it's not much different from if you're in, like, a field, like, you're, you're a librarian or something and you date a librarian, right? It's like yeah. someone who um, kind of understands the unique challenges of your field. It doesn't have to be like that, obviously. I don't like, so I don't select only for influencers in terms of people I would date, but, um, that just tends to be like easier. Um, but I've dated normal people as well. And it's, it's fine. Like it's, it's fine. Um, mm. yeah, I guess I was just curious, like, as like, Having like 450,000 people, I think you have on your channel, or maybe 475 or something, uh, subscribers. It's, it's a huge amount. I mean, that's a, I can't even conceptualize that amount of people. Is that a stadium full of people or something? Like, no, I'm sure it's not. <clears throat> you know, the subscriber number is just a, just a vanity number, really. I mean, it doesn't matter that much. Um, it's a sort of symbol of the people who clicked the button over the years. Um, it's a lot of people. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to have anyone that does watch me. And um, it's done irreparable things to my psyche. Um, and if I could, you know, if, if, I could, if I could perform for an audience, like a live audience of 1% of that number, I would, I'm, I would be a happy clam. I'd be a very happy clam. I could um, show you a happy clam, but if you just Google happy clam, any of those could be me. I want to see your impression of a happy clam, actually. I, I was, I was more, I was more, no, I was more going to, 
was thinking of showing you a picture, but if you wanted to, like okay. a demonstration. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, what would you perform in front of one percent of in, in front of forty-seven point five million people? Uh, I have a live show people? in Vancouver at the end of the month, May twenty-seventh. It's called Drake's Theory of Everything. I'm going to connect autism, schizophrenia, political extremism, ideology, uh, everything, everything in the entire world, internet stuff, into a cohesive sort of uh, PowerPoint style thing. And uh, tickets are live. They're 15 bucks. It's pretty cheap. Uh, and there's a capacity of 100 people max. Uh, and, you oh, know, if I'll, be, easy. I'll, I'll be happy. I'll be happy if, uh, you know, 30 people show up. I think we'll have a great time. Um, and uh, there's going to be some songs. I wrote some songs. It'll be fun. It'll be good. I, I really want to perform. Performing is uh, the kind of thing I've always wanted to, to do. I was also kidding about all that other stuff I said about um, <clears throat> relationships. I'm monogamous, uh, and I, I've been in a re monogamous relationship for the last 16 years. So I think that's, that's, that should, that's important to note. Um, and I will live uh, I'm until I'm 80. I traditional family structures, too, like nine-year-olds getting married. For, that's cool. 16 minus 25, nine, yeah. That's when it happened. Yeah. It was a bit of an arranged marriage. Um, they were trying That's to bridge right. two, two different theologies together. Uh, I was Pentecostal. She was Hexacostal, actually. And, oh. Um, yeah. So. Interfaith. I don't know about that. It's pretty radical. Yeah. I mean, it was like a, it was like a star. It's like a, it was like a, um, what's well, well, Hexacostal is what we call Jews. Because the mm. Star of David. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, good. Yeah. All right. Can have some Jewish kids then. That's nice. Wow. Is it a... Uh, yeah, you've been playing music for a long time. So I'm glad to hear there's going to be some music in your, in your uh, performance. Hey. Yeah. I'm not much of a I'm not much of a musician to be H, uh, but I'm a lyricist. And, um, I work with musicians, so just gonna play their instrumental, do some do some singing, see how it goes. I don't know. It's my first live show, really. So um, <clears throat> I just hope it goes okay. And uh, it's too concrete. Too concrete. I have to get abstract again. Men must dance. <laughs> Man must dance. Man must sing and dance. It's not enough for a man to look at a computer screen all day. It steals your vril. Mm. Do you have advice for young men out there? Yes. They shouldn't hear it. It's not going to be good for them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have it. I have, I have advice. I have advice. I mean, my philosophy is destroy the planet, uh, basically unironically. So it's not going to be good for people to hear. I want to hear it. It's just like... Love one another as Jesus would love you. That's an easy thing to say, and I hear it a lot. And oftentimes when I hear people say that, I don't think they're embodying it. Like, it's an easy thing, right? But how do you actually, like... It's much harder to look... Maybe it's harder, maybe it's not that hard, but looking into somebody and feeling God from them 
is. Mm. Sometimes it always doesn't just come from hearing the words. Yeah, it's uh, it is difficult. You're right. Um, I think though that is why. <clears throat> Maybe that's why the the lesson is important to take, but it's hard to act out. And, you know, it's kind of a broad religious lesson as well, or a broad philosophical lesson to see the divine in, in everybody, um, even people you don't like. I mean, that is the kind of, that's a very common religious trope is like trying to figure out, like, how does, how does this person love their enemies? How do they do it? I don't know. It's hard. It's like more than human. It's hyperhuman. Transhuman. Would the robots love each other? Probably. Probably. Not if I can help it. Yeah! Yeah! Take this, you real sucking motherfucker! Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> That's EMP tape. It destroys them on site. I'm surprised there hasn't been any AI terrorism, actually. <laughs> Like, people going and bombing data centers. Not like I want it to happen, but I think I'm, I'm, I could see it in the future. Yeah, I could see it as well. And, you know, when I, when I say stuff like people should go out and, um, you know, bomb data centers, I'm actually just making the observation that in the future, data centers will get bombed. I'm not actually saying you should go out, uh, find your nearest data center, and if you're someone with nothing to lose, bomb it. Um, because you would be doing the, the most net good for humanity. Uh, I'm just saying, like, I'm just more of an observation than a statement, like, uh, than a command, you know? Than a command. But, uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, yeah. I think we're going to have a, a serious faction between people who are pro and anti-AI, especially when things start to change. But, you know... I was talking to my partner, Elliot, about it, who's like, he's great. He's just so stable and happy all the time. And he also, like, coaches people. Mm. He teaches people meditation and stuff. And he was like, yeah, a lot of my clients have this issue, but um, they seem to be projecting whatever they want onto the future. So, like, a lot of people are projecting that it's going to be awesome and happy. And, like, I think I've just been living in my own head about how bad things are going to become. And what's helped me is just, like totally being in the present which sounds difficult but i don't yeah i don't know what the future is going to be <clears throat> that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're like listening to someone's projections of the future there's this guy who's a real ai pessimist uh like eliza yadakowski or something um Eliezer Eliezer. Yeah. he um yeah yeah um that guy's clearly neurotic like and you cannot dissociate his predictions of the future from his own obvious neurosis, just personal high trait neuroticism. Uh, that's how he in, in, engages with the world. No one's philosophy exists in like a pure intellectual vacuum. We're all putting our egos into it. So it's a good thing to remember. And that's a very astute from your partner there. Hmm. Totally. He said something about how like if you take a bunch of, I don't know, he read somewhere or whatever, if you take a bunch of antinatalists, so people who think that we shouldn't have any kids, and then you treat their depression, they stop being antinatalists. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Antinatalism is obviously a uh, <clears throat> is not, not happy. People don't believe in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> kind of seems obvious when you say it out loud, but <clears throat> yeah, no. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I'm happy. Nice. <laughs> so normal. Wow. So regular. <laughs> so happy people do. They wave. It's <laughs> my, my impression of a happy person. It's just waving. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing my best. We're all doing our best, aren't we? Yeah. That's all, that's all I, I can do, you know? Yeah. I think I'm around your self-esteem, maybe baseline, 
and I have started, I don't do it super regularly, but it, I'm doing it more and more, like, where I, I just see how happy, I, like, how happy or, like, kind of high self-esteem, like, it's a, they're, they're combined, I guess, in my head, I can get, and then I notice that as I sort of rise in happiness, like, I hit a, a thing that's, like, like a, a thing that I've set in the past, maybe like 15 years in the past, that's like, oh, you're not allowed to be that happy. Or like, what if, like a fear, like what if you're so happy and you don't see danger coming or whatever, you know, or just these little like memories from the past that don't really exist. And then it's like, I've noticed that if I get a little happier, hit something and then clear it out, I can maybe go a little bit higher, but I've actually got all this junk, like going up and up and up that um, I'm, I'm, my baseline is kind of set pretty low. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I think, I think I might be the same way. Yeah. Or at least that sounds relatable in the moment. I've got some things that are, are working out for me like right now. So I'm, I'm typically in like a better mood. <clears throat> I found like an organization app that that's been good for me, you know, keeping all my tasks organized. Um, you know, the more things I can stack on my, on my baseline mood, the higher it goes. So, um, yeah. So I guess, uh, we're going to wrap up the interview. It's been very fun. Thank you so much. I'm like actually super surprised that you decided to come on and be so genuine. So like, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm a very genuine person. I don't know why you're surprised by this. Um, got nothing but, nothing but honesty coming out of this mouth of mine. Uh, I don't remember the last time I told a joke. (laughs) Thanks for having me. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate, I appreciate your, um, your interview style. It's very interesting. It's actually one of the best, best podcast appearances I've had in a while. I found it very refreshing very uh you're very very good uh, good interviewer you're comfortable with silence that's a good that's a good trait as well um you strike me as very inquisitive and thoughtful <clears throat> um yeah no i enjoyed myself 